also YouTube, Dell here from Zephyr War Games, and because the uh, Castria depth profile did so well, I thought I'd bring you a combo and I'll do some test stands in the same video as well. So the combo I'm going to start off with is basically, uh, I believe it's Banish 6, Lock 4 Zones, Double Rank 7 Plays, um, and you require Unicorn, Side Beast, and then any Extender. So the extenders can be Ascended of the Thunder, Instant Contact, Astral Karibo, any other level 7 extender that you are playing. So obviously the issue is these are must-haves, they are very direct. And the reason that you need specifically these is Unicorn in a sense will basically give you an additional summon. Uh, Beast will, uh, well additional summon of a Castria monster. Beast will give you the ability to get um, a Castria banished and, or sent to the graveyard which will set up the Unicorn and the Rebirth play. And then your extender is just to complete the plays that you need. So, we're going to go with Astral Karibo because I want to kind of show you the additional plays you can get off of Karibo or what options are opened up with Karibo. So, because you control no monsters, you'll be able to special summon down the Unicorn. Unicorn's effect will go off and it's going to add you a Castria spell, which we're going to be adding Castria Birth. You're going to activate this, you're going to normal summon your side beast. Side beast effect will go off, uh, and this one will let you banish either uh, Fernir or if you want to, you can banish. Um, Ogre, it really doesn't make much of a difference. So either one of those, Ferno is probably going to be your most effective, but you're going to go into a double rank 7 anyway. Then what you're going to do is you're going to use the birth effect to bring back the Ferno that you have banished, and then you're going to be able to activate Astral Karibo, which will trigger the effect to reveal your Mind Hacker Darkest Diablos, and then summon itself down. Now it doesn't matter what card you overlay, all you're really going to want to be doing is keeping in mind that this one needs to go first because it locks you into numbers. It doesn't matter what else it goes with and it doesn't matter if you put two Castara, um, Castra on top of each other as well. So we'll just go Unicorn and Karibo and we'll go into Mind Hacker. Now you've got no issues putting Mind Hacker in defense because it was made of Astral Karibo. It can't be sure about battle or card effect. So it just protects you no matter what's attacking it uh, from taking any life point damage. Then because you've got out of the number lock, you then get to overlay your side beast with your Furnir, and you've got two rank 7s on top of that. Now what you're going to do here is you're going to use the Darkest Diablo's Mind Hacker's effect. doesn't matter if you detach Karibo because it gives the effect to it, rather than only be an effect while it's as material. Um, this will then allow you to look at your opponent's extra deck and banish one from it. Because you have done that, you'll then be able to trigger the Castra Shangri-La's effect. And you'll also be able to trigger the Darkest Diablos second, or well, technically third effect to banish from the top of your opponent's deck. So you resolve the Shangri-La, you lock out one of your opponent's zone, you then banish from the top of your opponent's deck. This will then trigger the um, Castro Shangri-La again, meaning you can lock out a second zone. Now it doesn't need to just be monster zones, it can be spell and trap zones. Um, but ultimately the way I see it is if you're locking out four monster zones, they're going to have a lot harder time playing than if you're locking out five um, or four spell and trap zones. You pass your opponent's turn, now it does require your opponent to do stuff, but the idea is you'll trigger the uh, Shangri-La's effect to special summon one from the deck. Now this can be, of course, be Ogre, it can be Unicorn, or it can be Furnir. Furnir is obviously going to be the most defensive play, um, because this one lets you banish a monster on the field. But if you want to rip from your opponent's extra deck another card, then you'd go with Unicorn as well. So either way, when your opponent activates a monster effect, um, that will then trigger Unicorn's effect or Fernie's effect, depending on where, it, um, specifically a monster effect, um, depending on what you want to try and do. Unicorn would then banish from your opponent's extra deck. That will then trigger on a new chain Darkest Diablos and then your Shangri-La. So your Shangri-La will then lock out a third zone. Your Mind Hacker will then banish one from the top of your opponent's deck. On another chain after that, your Shangri-La will again trigger to lock out a fourth zone. Now, of course, if your opponent activates Desires, you will then be able to lock out another zone. It can get a little bit crazy from here. If you are able to get another Castria to the monster uh, board or another Extender or anything like that, you will be in pretty much Dreamland because you would have been able to leave the Furnier on the board. This is just kind of like the average play you're going to get when you're getting the mixture of the cards that you need. The more standard play at this moment in time will be the, um, the Mind Hacker plus a Castra, or if you're going for a board lot, you'll probably go with Shangri-La plus Castra as well. So that's it for the very like bottom line combo of what this deck can do here and now. Obviously, keep in mind the reason that people are picking this deck up is because in the future it just gets a whole, 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 whole next level better. So what we're going to do is we're going to shuffle this up. So this is the profile that I showed you guys the other day. Uh, including the, the D Fissure and the Macro Cosmo, which I am considering taking out. 
But like I said, I kind of want to have the ability that even if I go second, you're either going to replace it with board breakers, um, or you're going to be placing it with cards that just don't insta lose to something like Dark Lord no more. Also, something interesting to mention on the Shangri La, um, and I'm not 100% sure if this is confirmed for the TCG, but apparently the zones are still locked out even if it gets Dark Lorded. But I, I don't know how that kind of relates. Uh, I could be, or it could be completely wrong on that, but it'd be interesting to find out if it is true. So, after a very decent shuffle and a good old cut, we'll do one test stand going first of five, and then one test stand going second of six. So, decent shuffle, good old cut, open hand of five being one, two, three, four, five. Okay, uh, that's an interesting hand to say the least. It's a shame that we've actually opened up the trap card, like you would like this to be something else, but the hand is still very much playable. So you're going to activate D-Shifter straight away. You could do it a little bit later. You could do something like um, Special Summon out the Unicorn and then attempt to use this effect. But keep in mind, if your opponent has a Veiler, they can activate it then and there. Whereas if you keep this in your hand, you activate Shifter, they then can't activate Veiler because it has to go to the Graveyard as cost. You don't care about um, your Graveyard at all, so you're absolutely fine. So you're going to Special Summon down the Unicorn because you control no monsters. You'll trigger the Unicorn effect. This will then allow you to search you out a Birth. Now, the sad thing about the birth is, yes, it will let you normal summon without tribute in, which is a great way for us to get Ogre onto the board as well. Um, but it's kind of like special summon effect. It needs to be banish or grave, which can be done, um, and I'll show you that in a little bit more. So, we're going to activate the birth. We're then going to special summon down the Ascended of the Thunder. We're going to take 3,000 life point damage. It doesn't really matter. Um, you can then conduct your normal summon of the Ogre because you can do it without a tribute summon. Um, obviously keep in mind that when your opponent activates a monster effect you get to look at their extra deck and banish one and then this one is um, if your opponent activates a monster effect you get to look at the top five cards or up to the top five cards of their deck and banish one put the rest back in the exact same order. Now what you want to do here is specifically because we're going to get double XYZ play in here uh, we're going to overlay Ogre um, well it doesn't really matter too much we can overlay U um, Unicorn and the Ascended Thunder for Diabolus the Mind Hacker. Um, it is a shame that you have to do it this way round because you would have liked to have got another board locked out or another piece on the board locked out. Sadly, um, we need to get one of these to the graveyard first, which means you need to make a rank 7 that is going to have to detach, and Diabolus is the best one to do so. So you're going to use the effect here, you're going to send the unicorn, uh, you're going to look at your opponent's extra deck, you're going to banish one, you then get to banish one from the top of their deck, or technically get two from the top of their deck. So they'll have the one banished from the extra deck and the one from the top of the deck. You can then activate Birth to bring back the Unicorn. Now it's up to you, you can leave these on the board because what this will allow you to do is technically banish another one from their extra deck, um, banish two more from the top of the deck and you get to banish this. Um, so technically you can end up making this one banish an additional three. Or if you want to get the zone lock, what you can do is you can then go for your Shangri-La and you pass your opponent. During the standby phase, obviously set the trap card, during the standby phase, trigger the effect of Shangri-La. This will let you bring out um, a Castro from the deck so you're probably going to go for the Furnir, or you can end up going for the Unicorn. Depends on how much you want to rip through their extra deck. At the end of the day, if they're playing something like Sprite, um, you're probably going to want to go for Unicorn, because you're going to want to rip through their extra deck more. You've probably already taken out one Gigantic here, and then you take out a second Gigantic with the Unicorn, because they will have to activate a Monster Effect in order to kind of progress their game state. So either way you do it, obviously keep in mind as well that when your Furnir triggers to banish a monster, that on a new chain, you'll then be able to trigger the Shangri-La and the um, Mind Hacker. So Shangri-La will lock out a zone. Mind Hacker will banish from the top of your opponent's deck, which will be two cards because you've already done one before. Uh, and then that will trigger Shangri-La and the second effect to lock out a second zone. So ultimately what you could do is you could lock out the zones below the link markers, depending on what deck they are playing. If they're playing, um, if they're playing Sprite, one way that could be really good is you can put the Shangri-La into your extra monster zone. And then what you do is when you're locking out two zones, is you lock out the two zones that Elf would point to, um, because then they can't protect any of them from targeting, which is really, really cool. Okay, so now let's reset this. Let's go second. So we'll show you how that additional card helps. Um, I mean, this is the issue right now with this particular deck, is it can only go so far. Like, the Castrias on if your opponent controls more monsters than you, or if one of them was like... If you try no monsters, special summon it. If another one was like, uh, if your opponent controls more monsters than you do, special summon it, that would have been really, really cool. Um, but that's why you play so many level 7 extenders until we get the new field spell, which increases consistency, and the new level 4, which you won't get till 2023. So you kind of want to experiment with this deck as it is. 
Uh, Rob did mention a very spicy pendulum build for this deck, which I love the idea of. Uh, I've just kind of got to get, get my head around it before I profile it. So after another decent shovel and a good old cut, I'll go in second hand will be one, two, three, four, five, and then six. Okay, that's not bad at all. It could have been a lot better. Like, your talents is kind of good because you can steal or remove a card. The defigure isn't the greatest unless they're playing something like Toad because then what you do is you'll have to activate this and then they'll be forced to tribute it so it doesn't go to the graveyard to negate this. Um, either or, really. Now, you've kind of got the ability, apart from being able to extend too far, you can actually activate Sacred Swords and let you draw two. Now, personally, you're probably going to want to extend a little bit further before you do that. Um... I would actually, let's activate the sword, let's get rid of the ogre, uh, we'll draw two, birth, broken, and unicorn, broken, either one of these from the draws would have been perfect, because now we've got the ability to do, um, you kind of wish that you would have banished the fern here. that would have been like hindsight 2020, uh, but the reason I didn't do that is if I didn't draw anything, I could still special summon down the fern here and still get plays moving off the back of it, um, I think I could ultimately still get fern here. either way. So, we don't need the birth off of Unicorn. <clears throat> so, we'll special summon down the Fern here. We'll then be able to um, activate the Ascended effect to special summon itself down. We can activate birth, which will special summon us back the Ogre. And then we'll also use burst effect for the normal summon. You can then obviously activate Ogre to search you out the trap card. You can activate um, Fern here to search you out a follow up. And then you can also activate Unicorn to search you up a backup for the birth. Obviously, at the moment, everything is a little bit limited. Um, I kind of like the idea of putting Magician's Souls in the deck as well. Um, for the pure fact that it can let you get rid of um, extra births. It can let you get rid of defissures if you want to, because keep in mind it sends us cost. Um, the issue is, if you you because I'm playing the defissures and I'm playing the macros, it kind of conflicts a little bit. Anyway, so we've pretty much replenished three cards in our entire hand. Um, and then the best thing about this as well is if you wanted to, you could overlay these in the into the Shangri La, and then you can go to the Diablos to start pulling parts of the, uh, pulling part of the board away. Or this is when you can start experimenting a bit more. You've got big eye options. You've got um, Diablos, which will end up technically banishing like multiple cards because you can banish from the extra deck. Then when you destroy a monster by battle, you get to banish one as well, and you'll get to banish another one. So again, if you're clearing off a board, you could overlay these two. But keep in mind as well, when an attack is declared involving these, they'll also trigger their effects. So, there's a lot for you to kind of consider and where you want to go with this. Because if you go this route, you're going to get one less attack off, but you'll lock out more zones. If you go this route, you'll banish more, and you'll control from the extra deck more, but you won't lock out any zones. So it's like, will the banish and will the removal from the uh, extra deck guarantee me a win over locking out zones? So... Let's go lock out zone route because it is obviously the Castria route. You would declare an attack with Fernir, trigger the effect to banish one card face down, trigger the effect to Shangri-La, lock out a zone. Uh, you would then declare an attack with Unicorn. Unicorn's effect will then trigger to banish one for your opponent's extra deck. That will then trigger the Shangri-La's effect and lock another zone out. So that's your two zones locked out already. Then if you go into main phase two, that's when you can overlay these two into the Diabolus. You could go into a Zeus if you want to, but that's up to you. You can then detach um, Diabolus' effect, banish one from your opponent's extra deck. Uh, the Shangri-La would then lock out a third zone. You would then banish one from the top of your opponent's deck. Um, and by that point, you would have banished four cards. Uh, I believe four cards at this point, so your opponent would banish another four. Trigger the Shangri-La effect, lock out another zone. You've then got the ability to set the trap card, pass your opponent's turn, standby phase, activate Ogre's effect. Summon out Unicorn or Fernir, either one. And then the second your opponent um, activates a monster effect or activates a monster effect you can banish from their extra deck, that will then trigger the Shangri-La's effect again. And the Diabolus effect, you'd lock out another front zone, so now they can't play any monsters. Um, and then, obviously, you trigger another one and the Shangri-La effect will go off and you'll lock out one of their back rows. So you can kind of see how you're just like, even going second, you're controlling the board down. Um, I suppose that's where, if you don't want to play the control cards like D-Fissure, Rivalry, if you want to, because you can see we only went full psychic apart from uh, the ascended. But obviously, by the time I flipped the the rivalry, I would have already been un under psychics anyway. Um, so you can kind of see the way that we're controlling the board state is we're locking out all of their zones. Uh, they've got no way to come back, and that's where a dark ruler will be fine because technically you don't need to do battle damage. 
Um, with those two at attacks of a 24 Furnier and a 25 Unicorn, you would have killed two monsters, you would have banished two cards, um, and then you would have pretty much left them with one monster if they filled up their board of five. So, yeah. The deck is crazy. It's very, very powerful. I love the idea behind it. It still has time to grow. This is experimental phase. But I thought this video would be useful for you guys to kind of see what it can do at current um, so that you are aware of it if you are going to face it and you are um, prepared for it or being able to learn basic stuff for it um, in order to build it and play it yourself. But... As absolutely always, guys, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, share. If you have any questions, please put them down in the comments below. I'll be more than happy to answer them for you. But for now, as absolutely always, stay safe and, of course, happy dueling.